All right, Dr. O, whenever you're ready. Good morning. I um, have been getting a few questions um, from people about where we stand with uh, respiratory viruses, particularly COVID in our area here in the triad and also in, uh, in North Carolina. And I think this is in, uh, in response to um, um, media from other areas in the country that have been talking about um, a quote surge. How's that for an old word that we've brought back uh, of COVID-19? Um, so here in the triad, we we are seeing more um, COVID illnesses, um, most of which are, are relatively mild. Um, we haven't quite had um, an increase like some areas of the country, um, particularly the West Coast and Hawaii. Um, but but yes, our numbers are a little bit higher. Um, what does that exactly mean? Well, if you look at our um, wastewater numbers, which if you remember, that's one way we have a have an idea how much COVID we have in a community. We measure the, the fragments of virus that are um, given out in our wastewater, in our sewage. Um, and these numbers are up um, here in our triad, but they're not up as high as they were last December or January, which was the height of our respiratory viral season. Uh, and actually in some areas here in the triad, it, they seem to be declining now after reaching a peak about a week or two ago. Um, also, we've been seeing um, a bit more COVID in our emergency departments. Um, talking to my colleagues down there a couple days ago, um, by no means are they overwhelmed with it. Um, they do discourage people from coming in uh, with their mild cases of COVID just to uh, get tested. Obviously, if people have problems breathing um, or um, otherwise seem really ill um, and it's an emergency, then emergency departments where they need to be. But for more milder illnesses, um, go ahead and test at home um, or in urgent care rather than come to the emergency department. We've had a few more cases of COVID in our hospitals, but I'll say that most of these are people who are admitted for other reasons and just happen to be um, also having symptoms of uh, an upper respiratory illness and when tested are positive for COVID. And again, these numbers are not as high uh, here in our Wake Forest uh, Baptist network um, as they were last uh, January. So overall, COVID-wise, um, we seem to be doing okay with this mid-summer surge. Um, and uh, that reflects a lot of things that are a little bit different about COVID now. First of all, um, a lot of us have immunity. We've either gotten COVID in the past or we've been vaccinated, some of us multiple times. And so we have all a bunch of antibodies in our body and our immune cells are all fired up and ready uh, to combat COVID if we're exposed. Um, the other is that the variants that are going around now, the so-called flirt variants, um, and that reflects two separate and different variants, um, are um, a little bit milder um, than the ones that we've seen in the past. They don't be, seem to be quite as mean. So as the virus becomes um, more contagious um, as the variants change, and um, and shift, it does seem to be losing a little bit of its oomph and ability to cause more severe disease. So that's, uh, that's good. Um, so between our immunity and a little bit of weakening of the virus, um, I think we're, um, we're seeing less severe cases. Um, now that's not to say that uh, people who are at the extremes of age, particularly people over the age of 65 or 70, or people with other underlying health conditions or people who are immunocompromised can't still get severe COVID. So um, as the summer goes on, um, our numbers will come back down again. Um, and I think just like they have in previous years um, and we'll get into the fall and then winter. And then when we get into our respiratory viral season, which starts in the second half of December, getting into January, 
um, our numbers will come back up again, not only for COVID, but also for flu and for RSV and our other viruses. So uh, what can we do to protect ourselves? Well, that hasn't changed much. Um, good hygiene, wash your hands a lot, particularly before right, eating, after using the restroom. Um, if you're in areas where um, uh, where it's crowded, such as an airport traveling this summer, you might want to put a mask on uh, while you're there, um, and that could help protect you, particularly if you're older or immunocompromised. And then um, you can get boosted um, for COVID. Um, right now, the boosters that we're offering, they're still the same ones that uh, we came up with last fall. So if you um, got a booster shot last fall for COVID, um, you're considered covered now unless you're older, over the age of 65, where we recommend a second booster. And you can go ahead and get that now if you wish. Um, and then get another booster in four months. The booster that'll be out this fall uh, will be um, specific for the flirt variants that are going around now. So just like how we tune up our flu shot every year for the circulating strains of flu, um, this will be a tuned up uh, COVID-19 vaccine. And uh, both of the uh, messenger RNA vaccines, Moderna and Pfizer's, We'll have one out. And then also Novavax, um, the um, non-messenger RNA recombinant vaccine, um, I hear will also have um, a booster out this fall. So get boosted before the respiratory virus season if you don't want to get sick. Um, and it's the same thing with flu. And you can get your um, vaccine for both COVID and flu at the same time. I anticipate that our flu vaccines will be out here um, as we get into August, um, and then um, different health systems will um, be offering those um, maybe at different times. So uh, keep an eye out on the press releases and announcements or check the web pages um, for the different health systems. I think the uh, COVID-19 vaccine will probably be out in the latter part of September, first part of October, uh, and you can get boosted then. Don't forget about RSV. RSV is also now approved in vaccine for um, all older adults, uh, as well as for um, the babies, um, those less than two years old. Uh, and uh, that can, what is, looks like it's very good at protecting um, against that uh, sometimes very serious um, respiratory um, viral infection. Um, right now, flu is at a very, very low level. Um, and we don't really anticipate that coming back until late fall or early December. Every now and then flu throws us a left turn. Um, and uh, sometimes it comes a little earlier, but we have no indications right now um, that that's going to be the case um, for this year. So um, with that, I think I'll go ahead and uh, open it up for questions um, and see what's on people's minds. question, Dr. Ohl. Um, It's Lindsay from WXII. I was just going to say, what do you basically contribute this random rise in cases to? Do you just think more people are out and gathering in the summer months, or why do you think we're having this surge right now? Yeah, that's a good question, Lindsay. I'm, I'm really glad you asked it. Um, there, there are The final answer is we don't know 100% for sure. But there's some pretty good theories um, that have data to support it. So um, one is, is that um, while all the other respiratory viruses seem to come out, you know, in the in the late fall, early winter, and then peak in January and February, for some reason, COVID's always had this summer surge. And it probably has something to do with um, that as the new variants come up, they usually come up right before the summertime. So we have a new variant that is a little bit better at evading immunity. And oftentimes is there a little bit more infectious. Um, and this is also a time when people travel a lot. And uh, when people travel, they uh, get together and they uh, share their viruses 
amongst each other. Also, um, as it gets real hot, which if you remember it was up until just recently, people are inside a lot more in air conditioned areas where the virus can spread um, better um, in these close quarters with lower humidity and cooler temperatures indoors. Um, and so th those are some of the reasons. It seems like though every year as COVID becomes more of a usual respiratory virus and less of a pandemic virus, that our summer surges aren't quite as uh, robust as they have been. And I think that's what we're seeing this year too. Dr. Ohl, thank you for your time. This is uh, Santiago Cho with WFPD. Uh, talking about these summer surges, what do the numbers now compare to the same time last year? So I would say, well, it depends a little bit where you are in the United States. If you're on the West Coast, um, in, in some communities, the, this, this summer surge is a little bit higher than last summer surge. Here in the triad and in, in, in North Carolina, it's not as high. Uh, it's probably about half as high as it was and probably um, somewhere between half and two thirds as high as it was in January or February of this past year. So um, um, some for some reason here in the Southeast, we're not quite um, surging as much, if that's a, uh, a word um, a, as we did last year. Any other questions? So in summary, I think you can say, yes, we're seeing a few more cases, um, not as much as some areas in the, in the country, um, and that this is largely due to um, more people traveling, getting together, um, and spending more time indoors as it's been hotter. Um, our numbers here in the triad seem to start to have started to go down um, compared to what they were a week or two ago. Uh, hospitalizations um, due to COVID um, are, um, are really um, in low numbers, um, and that's a great thing. Um, the virus is a little bit less severe because of our immunity and because um, it's a little weaker than it was a couple of years ago. Any other questions? All right. Well, enjoy the rest of your summer. I think we're on the on the second half of it now officially. Um, and um, it's going to get hot again. Um, so uh, it's summertime. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. All. Thank you all for joining us. Thank you, guys. Thank you.